In this video, I'm going to show you the game between Captain Evans and Alexander McDonnell. The game is known as Naval Intelligence. It is played in London, 1826, and it has a historical value. The opening is Italian game. So we have standard Italian game start. Bishop b4, lay town b4 was played here and it is known as Evans Gambit. So in this game, the idea for Evans Gambit is born, but white costs first and only then he plays b4. Bishop takes. And now we have something like Evans Gambit delayed. Bishop g4 pinning the knight here. Okay. In this position, queen goes to b3. So bell placed queen and bishop. A west bell placed to attack pawn on f7. So queen comes to the rescue here. And then knight g5 is played. White is bringing more attackers to f7. Now in this position, the best move would be to play knight to h6. But instead, black played knight to d8. Okay. Now, d takes e5, d takes e5. So, white has a play now to catch black king in the center of the board. He is going to play bishop a3 and rook d1. So, he starts with bishop a3 first. Bishop is now controlling long diagonal uh, a3, f8. And it is going to be difficult for king to castle in the near future. Black plays knight h6. Now we have f3 preparing uh, the way for the rook. Black threw in the rook. Uh, bishop. Bishop check. King moves to h1. Bishop goes back. And now we have rook d1. So queen is under attack and must move to c8. Okay, let's pause for a moment and uh, have a look at the position. What would be the best move for white now? How would you continue? Well, queen b5 looks like a good move. Is there any other good move? Well, have a look at this knight. Knights are usually worth three points. And rooks are worth five points. So you don't give your rook for the knight. But in this case, it is very good idea. Rook takes here. Queen takes. So what did I achieve? He achieved this. He can take on f7. And now, Black realized that neither knight takes f7, no bishop takes f7 are not good. Okay, let's see what happens if bishop takes f7. In this case, case bishop takes f7, knight takes. We have queen e6. So king can't move here. The only move that Black can play is queen e7 and hope for Tsunami or Earthquake. But since there is neither Tsunami or Earthquake here, he is checkmated. Okay, that's why he didn't like. Bishop takes f7. How about knight takes f7? Well, in this case, bishop moves to b5 and after the block. Queen can now freely go to e6 and then the same story again. The only move is queen e7, and queen takes e7, checkmate. Okay, so black saw this, and uh, that that was the reason why he didn't take the knight on f7. As you can see, queen is under attack, so he has to move the queen, and he plays queen h4. Okay, so it is white to move now. What would you play if, if you are white? How about taking, would you take the rook? That looks like a good move, you are winning 5 points there. Or is it? If you take the rook, then black would laugh out loud because queen e check, 
Enefta, Bisho Blocks, Queen Takes, and it is Checkmate. As you can see, tables are turned quickly here, so you have to keep your eyes on the Black King. You can't face moves uh, like Knight Takes, H8. Okay, how do you attack Black King? Okay, well, this is pretty good move. Queen gives check to king and also she's attacking pawn on e5. So after c6, queen takes e5 check. Well, only square for the king is d7. Okay, let's pause for a moment now. Now we have to give check mate the black king. And we have checkmate in two moves. Can you see checkmate in two moves? And funny how King is surrounded with all these pieces. He has no help us here. Okay, did you find a checkmate? If you saw Queen is 6, well then. Now the only square is not that then. Is C7. And after that, can you see the move? The move is Bishop to D6, checkmate. This is a brilliant game. I hope you enjoyed this video.